What's up guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna be answering all the comments that I wasn't already able to. Because uh, what I used to do on this channel was I used to, every comment that there was, I would put up a video uh, regarding like an actual dedicated video for that comment, an right? answer for 10 minutes. So um, obviously my channel is getting a little bigger, so I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to just answer your comments and uh, like all your comments in one video. So I'm gonna be answering the last couple comments that I wasn't able to put a whole dedicated video for um, for the past couple weeks in this video today. So let's get into it. Are there any medical jobs in the military? This is from Chauvinist. Yes, there are. Not in the Marine Corps, though. I don't know if there's one or if there's any in the Air Force either, just off the top of my head. There probably are. The Air Force is huge. But uh, Marine Corps is too small. We don't have any medical staff. So what we do have is Navy corpsmen. So they're going to be the, the hospital corpsmen. They're going to be on Marine Corps bases as the hospital staff and the air conditioned hospitals. And there's also going to be the Navy uh, corpsmen who are out in the field with us, the green side corpsmen. And they're going to be our medics, really. So I was a rifleman, so I was worked on by the corpsmen, the Navy corpsmen. So if you want to get a medical job in the military, go Navy. I know that uh, a lot of the deployments that Marines go on are to Europe or uh, even Iraq and Afghanistan. I know that there's a lot of Army bases there, and that's usually where you're going to be going for your medical care. So obviously there's Army nurses, medics, and stuff. So Navy or Army is your best bet. Air Force, if there are medical jobs in there, why not? But Marine Corps is a no-go. Uh, what age did you enlist? 17. And thoughts on enlisting as, as infantry at the age of 22? Uh, I already replied to this comment, and what I said was the average age in boot camp is probably around 22. 21, 22, somewhere around there. Um, there's going to be, obviously, a lot of guys like me who, uh, three days after getting out of high school, enlist and or, you know, ship out to boot camp. But uh, there are a lot of people who drop out of college, and I, I remember seeing another comment down below. I'm not going to get lost, though. Um, I, I remember seeing another comment where this guy was, like, 23, and he enlisted as a machine gunner. And, you know, like, there's a lot of people like that. They drop out of college because they're like, man, fuck this shit. I want to do something with my life, and that's what they do. Also, I think that it's better to enlist in the infantry specifically at a later age, just because when I was 17, I don't even know how I enlisted because I was, like, 120 pounds. Like, I'm not a big guy. I was still a kid. I was very much a kid. Could barely grow a mustache, and I enlisted in the fucking Marine Corps. So I think that's better if you are older to join the infantry. I think that you can obviously join when you're 18, but um, you're just gonna be, you know, you're gonna have that dad bod, right? You're gonna be able to be a little thicker, you know, um, that can too gay. I mean, it's you're gonna be ready at that point to be infantry, right? To carry a lot of weight and shit. So. Um, <laughs> this guy, his name's Sweet Cheeks. He's like, it's Tagalog, Tagalog, something. That's the common dialect in the Philippines because he was answering some, some stupid shit I said in a different video. Um, what are the pros and cons with being fluent in another language in the Marines? So, uh, I believe it's for any any branch, but if you are fluent in another language, including Spanish, uh, like, and you have to be fluent. You can't just take Spanish one and Spanish two and then take a test and you you know. You win, but uh, if you're actually fluent, like literally fluent, they're gonna make you test it. Uh, then you will be given uh, a certain stipend. I think it's like fifty to like a hundred fifty dollars a paycheck, which is a huge amount. Every two weeks, you get paid, um, at least in the Marines. So if you speak another language, they'll have you take a test, and you'll be given more money a paycheck just because you know a different language. Uh, it's very valuable, obviously. So if we're Training with some people that are uh, from a different country. It's nice to know that we have somebody who can speak that language I knew we had a Russian guy. We had uh, my buddy. He's he's just freaking American But he's he's fluent in Chinese because he's freaking Genius, I'm not I'm not kidding. He's the whitest kid. I know but he's fluent in Chinese. So obviously he's getting some money um, Yeah, so obviously there's no cons to it obviously I mean, okay, so you can't speak the language on base or else they're gonna be like stop, you know because you can't be like you know secretly saying stuff in front of the uh, instead of in front of your leadership, so you can't be saying that it's not allowed. Um, but that's the only con I can think of. Um, he likes my videos. How do I? Okay, <laughs> this guy. His name is Barn. He's he's being thanked for his service as a pulley, which I remember being thanked for my service as a pulley. And how to respond to that? I embraced it as a pulley. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world, but. I know, I know what you're saying because you aren't a Marine yet and you're like, okay, these people obviously don't know the difference between a pulley and a Marine and like enlisting and actually being a Marine and um, how would I respond, uh, how I did respond as a pulley most of the time? 
um, to being thanked for my service was I was like, oh, thank you, I appreciate it. But just so you know, like I'm not a Marine yet. Like I enlisted, but I did I haven't gotten to boot camp yet. I'm not a Marine yet. I haven't done shit. So just you know, just putting that out there. I I'm not trained. So I would say that usually um, how to respond to it. Obviously, it's case by case scenarios, but. If you're being thanked for your service, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, civilians don't know the difference between those things. So make sure to explain that you enlisted, but you weren't a Marine yet, if that makes sense. Um, you still are worthy of praise, I would say, to an extent, but not like thank for your service, like, you, like you've done shit yet. Um, now, being thanked for your... Per uh, I know this was in the comment, but being thanked for your service as a Marine, this is a weird one, too, because... Uh, I don't know, because I didn't do shit. I mean, yeah, I was a Marine. Yeah, I did my job, but, like, I didn't go anywhere. I didn't do anything, but I still get thanked for my service, and I'm expected to, uh, con you know, expected to take that in and uh, actually thank myself for, you know, my service. They're like, oh, yeah, thank you. Um, how I respond usually, I still don't know. I'm usually like, oh, you know, <laughs> like, I really don't know how to respond to it, so... Um, Jeez. Usually say like, oh yeah, thank you. Um, or like, oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. I mean, that's a good way to do it. Just a nice, quick way. It ends the ends the conversation there. You don't have to go on to it and be like, oh, blah, 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 blah. You know, you can just make it nice and quick and be like, oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. I guess that's the best way. Uh, this guy is planning on doing more pull-ups, push-ups, and lunges. Good on you. Good on you. This is right out. Uh, I don't smoke or drink. This is Wolf. Good. Don't smoke or drink if you don't have to, all right? Um, this guy wants to join. It's Wolf again. He wants to join college first to be an officer. Hey, whatever you want to do. Officer, enlisted route, you're still a Marine, and uh, there's still room for you. Um, yeah, this guy, this is the guy Spartan. He enlisted uh, out of college and went machine gunner. This guy's been stuck at 15 pull-ups. I already answered this and uh, told him what he needed to do. Weighted pull-ups, right? If you're stuck on like, if you're stuck on a certain, like with the push-ups thing, if you guys watched that video about uh, the workouts or exercises you should do, um, I explained that if you're getting, if you can already do 40 push-ups and you're like, man, what's the next step? Do dips, right? You can only do 15 dips if you can do 40 push-ups. You know, try and, try and do different things that do the same muscle group, but just in a different way. Um, so uh, if you can do 15 pull-ups, you know, pull-ups are a weird one, so try and do weighted pull-ups. Put a dumbbell between your legs, you can get better. Um, this is how you do more pull-ups and get stronger. You just add more weight. That's for anything. Um, ch -ch -ch. A lot of thanking me for my videos. I appreciate it, guys. I really do. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so difference between uh, fast and PRP, and which one gets a top-secret clearance. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't know what the fuck PRP is, but I do know what FAST is, and I will touch on that. FAST companies, if you guys didn't know, they're security forces billet, so in order to go security forces in the Marine Corps, so like security guard, you know, whatever, <clears throat> you have to be infantry, so you have to complete infantry and then go, go and do that. But you can enlist, um, depending on if they have slots open, right out of SOI, and they're going to ask you, oh, who wants to be part of FAST? And you're going to be like, oh, me. Um, so f what FAST is is they're sort of like, they aren't Navy SEALs, they aren't Special Forces by any means, but they do sort of special jobs. They repel out of helicopters, um, like they specialize in like very security, like um, if a building is taken over, like getting in there. That's what I what I understand about FAST, is that they, you know, they plan on like freaking breaching places and like going through, like sort of like a Delta Force sort of thing. Um, God, I hope I'm not butchering this. I'm pretty sure that's what they do. Because my squad there was fast. Uh, fast companies, they think they're know-it-alls. And you know what? They, uh, basically, you get to do all the Navy SEAL shit, but you don't have to go through all the crazy training. Um, still, you're going to be repelling out of helicopters, repelling off of fucking rooftops and shit, uh, shooting cool guns and stuff. But, I mean, fast is cool. PRP, I don't know what it is. And do they have a top secret clearance? Probably. And probably not like top secret, but like there's like different classes and stuff uh, to uh, security clearances. Um, you're gonna have to go and get your own security clearance once you even join, so uh, you'll understand all that stuff once you join. It'll be fun. Um, uh, what, there's something else I want to touch up with it though. Fast. Yeah, my squad there. I mean, he would. Okay, so he he went to Kuwait, which is pretty cool. He was only in the Corps for like three years by the time he was my squad there. 
he went to Kuwait already in a, in a fast company. So fast company, you're going to get deployed more and uh, you're going to be more used up than uh, the freaking average day rifleman. Um, what's my MOS? 0311. And then the next guy, Cooper fucking Pogue. I don't know if he was talking about me. I, because in the same video from Dangle, I answer, yeah, it's 0311. And then this guy calls me a Pogue. I'm not a Pogue. A Pogue is a person other than Grunt. I literally said it was 0311. So I'm not a fucking Pogue. Um, I have pain in my left wrist when doing push-ups. Will this be a problem? I already answered it. No. I have pain in my left wrist. I have pain everywhere. I think all of us do. Like, we all have our little kinks and stuff. A lot of people are like, oh, yeah, you know, like, whenever I move my knee. I, I hope you guys can hear this. Dang it. Yeah, did you hear that? It was my knee cracking. That stuff happens. It's not like... It's, it's just like your fingers. When you crack your fingers. It's not like... It isn't bad. It's just like air bubbles moving. Um, so... When when your when your ankle cracks going uphill, unless it like actually is painful and it's like unbearable and you feel like there's something inside where it's just like it's no go, right? Then I would you know I would see a doctor for it. But other than that, having pain in your left wrist, having cracks when you're running or whatever, it's not that big of a deal, guys. Um, just push on. This guy in particular did have a broken ankle, so um, definitely check up with your recruiter, see what he thinks about it, just because, like, I know that if you have broken things, and if you have, like, plates in your back, or, like, your spine, or wherever it is, plates, like, actual metal stuff, like, screws, they're gonna have a little, they're gonna be a little iffy about that, so make sure to explain that to them, and, um, you know, just having that stuff, and they'll let you know what job would be best for you, and if you can join, and all that shit. When should I talk to a recruiter? Uh, I would say as soon as possible, so if you know that you want to join the Marines, like, Okay, make sure you have a plan, first of all. So I knew I wanted to join the Marines since I was a baby, a wee little baby. So I talked to him as soon as possible. I, I enlisted as soon as possible, which is at 17. That's when you can enlist. Um, so when should I talk to a recruiter? I would say as soon as possible. But I, obviously, if you have a plan to go to college and then like your backup plan is military, don't talk to a recruiter yet. You don't have to. Um, I mean, recruiters are good for that stuff, but... Um, just like giving you the information you need so obviously you can get your information from them but don't enlist if you don't have to um, or if you don't want to if it's your plan B um, what if your exo is smoking herbs it happens yeah I know uh, God. My, I, oh my god I don't know if I explained this uh, the story to you guys before but one of my uh, buddies I'm not gonna say his name I don't know if he's listening but he was a freaking sniper and what he did I've got his name in my head. I keep wanting to say it, but um, what he ended up doing was he's a sniper. He went out to some freaking party in uh, Cali, which is where we were stationed, and he was distributing cocaine. Like we had no idea. He distributed cocaine, ran from a police officer, got tackled to the ground, he got put in the brig, kicked out of the Marine Corps, and now he's a homeless man living in a tent right outside our base, which is so funny. But um, um, well, I mean it's fucked up. But I mean I gave him my blanket. I gave him like freaking uh, oh yeah the propane tanks I had from uh from the uh, Bridgeport because you know you, that's how you heat up your food I gave him some propane things I'm like dude just take whatever because he came on base he's like oh I'm just you know <laughs> freaking kicked out of the Marines dishonorable discharge um, don't smoke stuff in the Marines don't do any of that shit you're gonna get caught and you're gonna ruin your life so don't do that hazing uh, as for hazing in the Marines um, I mean uh, hmm I hate to say that I was hazed because, like, it wasn't like, it wasn't like hazed hazed. I know what hazing is. It's there's a lot of hazing where, like, if you're if you're getting, there's one called getting pinned, all right? Or you're you're getting yeah, getting pinned, right? So if you're getting like the a, a lance corporal pin, say you're a PFC right now and you're getting a lance corporal, you're gonna put those things on there. And what your buddies are gonna do if they're allowed to is they're gonna get their like a fist and they're gonna freaking slam it on your chest. So both the two holes that put the pins, they're gonna go straight into your uh, chest. Didn't happen to me. Um, ours didn't allow it because they were a bunch of pogues, but um, I guess that's considered hazing. There's people who like beat each other up. Uh, they beat uh, people up like that are messing up. I've seen that, uh, it hasn't happened to me yet, or before. And there's there's little things like this too, where uh, they're gonna make you, um, God, it's so stupid. I mean, it's not hazing, but it's just, I mean, it, it technically is hazing, but it, you know, I, I hate to say it, just like, this is just how it is. So in the morning, I remember one of my buddies fucked up in my squad. So the squad leader, the, guy, the same guy from Fast, he takes us all out, takes us out on, on a nice run, um, like shitty, shitty run. And then we, we end up taking up these uh, these freaking giant tires. They're like 250 pounds or some shit. 
we had to carry it above our heads and like um like all four of us like on each side were like carrying it and he was just watching us while we we're like carrying it up and down this hill this sand hill because we're in the middle of the desert um so i mean te technically that's hazing this happens all the time though where your squad leader will watch you with hands on his hips just watching us go up and down this freaking hill puking and um just making us do a bunch of work um so hazing yeah expect that sort of stuff uh it's a lot like boot camp that's what it's going to look like in the fleet um just not doing you know them just watching you do the work uh doing the you know intensive training and stuff while you're uh while you're just running up there um uh do they judge you on how you look being skinny yeah i i okay he's saying that he's 15 now he's he's it seems like he's kind of anxious about it because he's he's skinny and he's scared about the um how he looks going into the marine corps and stuff look there's a lot of skinny people like i remember i was like the buffest guy i like i'm i'm like not even that buff too like i was the one of the buffest guys in boot camp but I'm also five foot four, so I had to make up for it. Um, make sure you do the training beforehand. If you are skinny, be like, hey, you know, let's let's uh, let's start and do some work, get some mass on my body. But will they make fun of you? I'll tell you what, man. You're 15. Um, I remember myself in your shoes. I remember even up until boot camp, like I was an anxious guy. I was scared about how short I was. I was I was so anxious about everything. And that's what it's like when you're 15. You're gonna be anxious about everything. So don't get don't get too tied up with how you look right now um just put in the work if you're skinny it doesn't matter just just put in the work try and put a, on as much mass as possible and as for being made fun of look that's just the military but i promise you will you will feel better once you're actually in it you're 15 years old you're gonna be anxious as fuck at this age so just don't don't even worry about what it's gonna be like in the military it's gonna be fine um and this guy likes pie oh, thanks wolf uh, am i a recon marine no i'm not i'm not recon uh, <laughs> uh, oh yeah, just talking about that. I, I wanna, I wanna get you guys as many, as many comments answered. It's already twenty minutes. Damn it. Uh, I'm helping the military. Thanks, man. Appreciate. And uh, okay, yeah, this is the one that I really want to touch on. Uh, this is from Jamie King. Good old Jamie King. Um, because he's thinking about doing the army now. The Army new ACFT and PT standards it looks, it seems like the Army is following the Marines now when it comes to physical fitness. Yes. I was actually researching this a little bit. <clears throat> Had to give it some time because uh, I know what that's, um, I didn't know anything about it. So as for the ACFT, the new thing that the Army is going to be implementing in like 2020 or some shit, uh, it's looking like it's going to be very, very good. It's tough. It's really tough. Uh, combat fitness tests. Uh, this is something the Marine Corps has had for years, many, many years, decades probably. Uh, what the combat fitness test is for the Marines is uh, like a, a freaking, I think it's a mile, a mile long with boots and like full, like full camis and stuff. You have to do a mile run in that, uh, like in a very fast time. It's basically a sprint. And then uh, you have to do an ammo can lift and then you have to do... This, uh, like, sort of course where, um, I'm not gonna be able to explain it, but just look up CFT of the Marines and they're gonna show you. It's just a bunch of sprints and dragging people, and, um, the Marines already have this CFT. Uh, now, as for the Army, they just implemented their ACFT, the Army Combat Fitness Test, and this is gonna be, like, a bunch of, um, like, deadlift. It's gonna be, like, throwing a ball above your head and, like, seeing how far it can go. It's gonna be a lot of good stuff. I think this is good for the Army. Um, I think people, the military, you know, specifically, is waking up to the fact that not everybody can fit every build in the Marines, or, or the military in general. Like, you can't have women in the infantry. That's why they hate these tests. You, you think this is just coming out just because? No, it's because they don't want people like me that are five foot four joining the infantry, even though they pass the PFT like crazy. Oh yeah, he can run super fast. Oh, he'll be a great infantry Marine. Put 100 pounds on my back, not so much. I was really bad at the CFT, I'll be honest. I was super bad. But I was able to still pass just because it wasn't implemented. So I'm happy that the army is doing this. They're waking up to the fact that we can't be having five foot marines going in infantry. We can't be having women going in the infantry in the army, you know. So that's why they're doing the ACFT. I think it's a great thing for the army. And um, if you're going into the army, make sure you look it up. Practice those things, right? Um, practice doing ruck runs. Practice doing all those things. You don't want to. You don't want to be left in the dust or uh, enlist in a job like my cousin which was infantry, and then find out, look, this isn't for me. 
So make sure you do your hard work beforehand. It is now 20 minutes. Uh, so I'm gonna pass this video on. Uh, <laughs> like I'm passing it on to somebody. I'm gonna pass it on to uh, YouTube now. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, hey, good stuff, right? Good stuff. I appreciate you guys commenting. I always ask you to, and you never leave me, um, leave me to be. I don't know. All right. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.